How you doing everyone? So my last video, I talked about players that were great in their rookie seasons, but then fell off after. You can see that video up here somewhere. But in this video, I'm going to talk about players that were bad in their rookie seasons, but were great later on. Let's start with Mo Vaughn. I absolutely loved Mo Vaughn as a kid. He was my first favorite player as a Red Sox fan uh, during the early days of me being a Red Sox fan. He was the big name, at least for me. Now, people love David Ortiz. He's obviously, you know, Red Sox legend, but Mo Vaughn, in my opinion, was the guy before David Ortiz. This guy just mashed in his career, had over a 900 OPS in his career, over 300 home runs. He was a fan favorite, won the MVP in 1995. But if you go take a look at his rookie season in 1991, 74 games, hit 260, 339 on base, 370 on the slugging. Even that next year, still really didn't get it going all that much. So it took him a couple of years to really, you know, become that player that he ended up being. But then in 1993, he really took off, you know, in those few years for Boston from 1993 to 1998 had three all-star appearances, hit over 300 during that time, had an OPS at almost 1,000 during that time. So Mo Vaughn, he was an awesome player, uh, but he definitely was a slow starter. Up next, we got Placido Polanco. Now, I don't think Polanco was necessarily a star in the game, but he was one of those very good players that you just wanted to have on your team. Now, he wasn't a big slugger necessarily, but he was a really good hitter and a great defender as well. Overall in his career, hit 297 with a 343 on base, and because of the defense, had a wins above replacement at 41.9 in his career. That's very good. A couple of all-star appearances, a few gold gloves, even won a silver slugger, was the ALCS MVP in 2006 with the Tigers. But an interesting career. Started off with the Cardinals, 98-99. It took him a little bit, you know, to get going here. You know, not great numbers at the plate, not even great defensively. And then the next couple of years, that glove really started coming around. And then the Cardinals ended up trading him to the Phillies. Have you ever wondered how Scott Rowland ended up with the Cardinals? Well, here you go. Placido Polanco was in that trade. And then later down the road, after a couple of more good seasons with the Phillies, he ended up getting traded to the Tigers. And remember that Tigers team, like I just said, you know, he was the ALCS MVP. They made it to the World Series that year. You know, he actually wasn't really all that great that year. He was pretty solid defensively. But 2007, he picked it back up again. He, he just had, you know, just good seasons, right? Nothing, you know, MVP caliber, just really good, solid defensive seasons, you know, did well with the bat, you know, great contact hitter, really liked Placido Polanco a lot. So again, another one of these guys took him a little bit to get going, but ended up being a solid player in his career. Up next, we get a Ramos Ramirez. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that when you bring up the early to mid 2000 Cubs, they think of players like Sammy Sosa, Mark Pryor, Kerry Wood, a lot of good players on those Cubs teams just missing the World Series in 2003. Still breaks my heart to this day. But the one player that comes to mind for me at least is always a Ramos Ramirez. I don't know why, but he was a really good player. Now taking a look at his numbers and his his career he was really solid almost had 400 home runs in his career hit over 280 had an OPS over 800 very solid player he was and he had a lot of good years with the Cubs but he was a slow starter taking a look at the numbers in the beginning of his career with Pittsburgh in 1998 not a good rookie season at all he had a negative 1.0 fan graph war 99 he missed a lot of time 2000 still really didn't get it together 2001 he broke out then had a 4.7 fan graph war 34 home runs that year a 536 slugging very good year but then 2002 the numbers dropped off again and then he ended up getting traded to the Cubs with Kenny Lofton, you know, from 04 to 08, you know, he had two all-star appearances. He was, you know, top 10 in MVP voting a couple of times. Very good player. Actually, if we take a look at these numbers during this time, very good. Overall, during this stretch, hit over 300 uh, with a 366 on base, a 554 slugging, averaged 32 home runs a year. Definitely a really good pickup for the Cubs. Uh, and this is a guy, again, slow starter, just another example of a guy that can have a bad rookie season and then go on to do some good things. Let's talk about a guy that's actually still playing, and that's Anthony Rizzo. Believe it or not, he was actually with the Red Sox at one point, and I was pretty excited about Anthony Rizzo. He was putting up good numbers in the Red Sox organization, but those good numbers ended up leading to him being a piece in the Adrian Gonzalez trade before that 2011 season. Now, I liked Anthony Rizzo, 
but we got Adrian Gonzalez. I was doing cartwheels at that time. Oh my goodness, I was so excited. I was a little sad Rizzo was gone, but we got Adrian Gonzalez at the time. I was so happy. Uh, but then he played one season with the Padres, and it was a bad season. 49 games, only hit 141, a 281 on base, a 242 slugging. The Padres said, all right, forget this guy. We're going to ship him off to the Cubs in the Andrew Kashner trade, and that ended up being one of the most lopsided trades in history. The Cubs reaped all the benefits. He ended up becoming a really good player, but most of all, his bat was just vital for the Cubs in that 2016 run to ending their curse to winning a World Series uh, ended up being you know one of the best players on that team uh, just a great career with the Cubs uh, but Anthony Rizzo this is a guy who's just had many good seasons over his career one of the better defenders at first base as well so Anthony Rizzo hey another slow starter but he found his way Speaking of bad Padres trades, let's talk about Corey Kluber. Remember when Corey Kluber was in the Padres organization at one point, but he was traded in a three-team deal that sent Jake Westbrook to St. Louis and Ryan Ludwig went to the Padres and Corey Kluber ended up in Cleveland. And my goodness, what a run he went on with Cleveland, winning two Cy Youngs. Man, now I know he wasn't very good with the Red Sox last year, you know, whatever about that. But this run from 2014, to 2018 was just insane two Cy Youngs multiple Cy Young votes during that time I mean just look at these numbers when 83 and 45 an ERA of 2.85 a FIP of 2.83 average 10 strikeouts per nine under two walks per nine under a home run per nine are you kidding me now if we go take a look at his first couple of years in Cleveland though you know not anything spectacular right look at that ERA over those three games there 2012 he made 12 starts uh you know just nothing great you know an ERA at 5.14 FIP was a little better at 4.28 but he made adjustments along the way and it led to just an amazing run uh the run of the clue bot you know I remember anywhere I went you know any if I went to any forum or anything you just see someone talking about the clue bot uh you know help the Indians get to the world series in 2016 so hey you know a guy and it took him a little bit to really figure it out these are pretty bad numbers overall especially that 2012 season uh but hey what a career for Corey Kluber. Hey, everyone. Before I get to the rest of the video, I just want to shout out today's sponsor, and that's BetUS. They got a ton of different ways to play, and they got a full slate of games on for today. One game I got my eyes on is the Angels and the Rays. Right now, the Rays are favorites at minus 116. They are at home. The Angels are at plus 106, but I actually think that is a good value bet right there. I like the Angels in this matchup because you got Reed Detmers on the mound tonight. Uh, this guy has had a great start to his year, 3-0. ERA at a 1.04, FIP at a 1.46, 13 and a half strikeouts per nine. This guy is absolutely nasty. Right now, he's tied for second when it comes to fan graph war among all starting pitchers, but it's not just Reed Detmers. You got the offense hitting well lately, uh, 12th overall in WRC plus over the last seven games, and Mike Trout, my goodness, this guy looks like he's back, and that's just great for the game of baseball. This guy's been tearing it up lately. I like the Angels in this one. I would highly recommend going with the plus 106. So if I throw down 50 bucks here, that would win me 53. I'm going to place that. Uh, overall, I think that's a great value. But as always, make sure you play responsibly. There's a whole ton of different ways to play here. There's a whole bunch of other games. There's a whole bunch of different props you can play for. Uh, you got hockey going on right now, basketball as well. So head on over to BetUS. The link is down below in the description on your first three deposits you get a 125 percent bonus definitely take advantage of that but without further ado let's get to the rest of the video remember earlier i talked about adrian gonzalez well he also had a slow start to his career he was actually drafted number one overall by the marlins in 2000 but then he was traded to the rangers in the uga thurbina trade in 2003 that helped the marlins win the world series that year uh, but adrian gonzalez did not have a great time in the first couple of years with texas very small sample size in 2004, 16 games, but 2005, his official rookie season, not great. Only hit 227, OPS of 678. 
but he ended up getting moved to the Padres before the 2006 season in a deal that involved Chris Young and Adam Eaton, and he ended up having some great seasons with the Padres. He was getting MVP votes, four All-Star appearances, and then he was traded to my Red Sox, which I brought up earlier. You know, he had a great first season with the Red Sox. He was very good that year, uh, but then 2012, well, remember 2011, everything just fell apart in September 2012. They hired Bobby Valentine, and and 2012 was just a miserable year. Ended up getting traded along with Josh Beckett and Carl Crawford, a very bad signing for the Red Sox, uh, to the Dodgers and just a massive salary dump. Um, he did end up having some good years with the Dodgers later on, you know, from 2013 to 2015. Uh, but Adrian Gonzalez, I think he's one of the more underrated players in the game. I loved his swing. I loved how he just had opposite field power. He was built perfect for Fenway Park. That's why a lot of Red Sox fans were so excited to get him. You know, great career. Overall, hit 287, OPS of 843, over 300 home runs. Uh, but again, another slow starter. Up next, let's talk about Jose Batista. Now, let's go back to the beginning of Jose Batista's career. It was all over the place. He was drafted by the Pirates. He was traded to the Orioles, went to the Rays, went to the Royals, went back to the Pirates. He was with four different organizations before going to the Blue Jays. That's just insane. But he wasn't putting up good numbers at all. He couldn't stay with any team. Ended up having his first full season in 2006. And these numbers, you know, pretty underwhelming. Hit 16 home runs, you know, 755 OP of the Pirates that year. Not bad, you know, but not great either. And then eventually he went to the Blue Jays and my goodness, this guy went on a run for the ages from 2010 to 2015. He was getting MVP votes all over the place. I think there's still a, a case for him to be the MVP in 2011. Justin Verlander won the award that year. Jacoby Ellsbury came in second. Jose Batista had a monster season that year. But look at these numbers from 2010 to 2015. He was averaging 38 homers per year with 97 RBIs. OPS of 945. Had that amazing moment in the playoffs later on. Uh, where he had the you know, massive bat flip. You know, people still watch that to this day. Jose Batista became one of the biggest stars in the game. You know, it's a great story, you know, considering just how, you know, bad he was in the beginning of his career and how many different organizations he was with before finally finding a home with the Blue Jays. You know, he ended up tailing off towards the end of his career. His numbers really started to go down. But this run here was absolutely amazing. I'd be willing to bet there's some people out there that don't remember Miguel Tejada. Miguel Tejada was so good when he was at his peak, winning the MVP in 2002 with the Moneyball Lays, but in the movie, I guess Miguel Tejada never existed. I don't know. Uh, but Miguel Tejada, he was such a good hitter with the Oakland A's, went to the Orioles, had three all-star seasons in a row for them, ended up going to the Astros later on too. Just a very good career for Miguel Tejada. Overall, hit 285, 336 on base, a four 56 slugging over 300 home runs in his career good shortstop as well 47.1 wins above replacement his official rookie season in 98 wasn't all that great only hit 233 with a 681 ops he was a little better in 99 had a 751 ops but he really broke out in 2000 that stretch from 2000 to 2006 was excellent over this time hit 297 with an 849 ops averaged 29 home runs a year 116 rbis you know after that his numbers started to dwindle a little bit but he had a couple more good seasons with the Houston Astros in 08 and 09 and remember 2004 won the home run derby that year too but Miguel Tejada I think is one of the more underrated players in the game up next let's talk about one of the best sluggers of all time Carlos Delgado and yes believe it or not it took him a couple of years to get going he wasn't very good in his rookie season in 94 now he hit for some power had nine home runs a 438 slugging that's not bad had a 352 on base so that was a good sign of things to come but still not that complete hitter at the beginning of his career and I think a big reason for that was he was very focused on trying to find his position he came up as a catcher you know they didn't play him a whole lot there so they eventually moved him out to the outfield and left field and then eventually settled on him being a first baseman which I think was the best move for his career because my goodness this guy just went on an absolute tear he actually had 10 straight seasons of hitting 30 or more home runs. I mean, look at these numbers that he put up during this time. Got MVP votes all over the place. Let's actually go here from 96 all the way 
to 2000 and th- uh, 2004 before he went to the Marlins, ended up getting traded there. And taking a look here at these numbers, hit 286, had a 961 OPS over this time, averaged 36 home runs a year, 114 RBIs per season. Just the madman at the plate. Ended up having a few good seasons with the Mets as well. This guy, easily one of the best hitters of all time. And last but not least, let's talk about big, sexy Bartolo Colon. What a career for Bartolo Colon. Man, oh man, this guy pitched a lot in his career. If we actually go take a look at the numbers here, he's 29th all time in games started with 552. And when it comes to innings pitched, he actually ranks 76 all time with 3,461 and two thirds. That is a lot of innings. My goodness. Uh, But Like everyone else on this list, he was a slow starter. Take a look at his rookie season in 97 with the Cleveland Indians. 19 games, 17 starts, ERA of a 5.65, FIP at a 4.90. But after that, he really got it going, man. He was an all-star in 98. This guy just put up good season after good season. Went to the Expos for one quick stint. Went to the White Sox in 03. Ended up going to the Angels. Won the Cy Young in 2005. This guy was just so good. But then he kind of fell off a little bit. He went to my Red Sox in 2008. Back to the White Sox in 09. Ended up missing all of 2010. But he went to the Yankees in 2011. And he got his career back on track at 38 years old. This guy guy my goodness at 41 years old went to the Mets and ended up just having this great fun run Mets fans will always love Bartolo Colon helped them get to the World Series in 2015 he was solid for them and another thing that Mets fans love and they still bring up to this day was the home run that he hit in 2016 that will long live in memories and not just Mets fans uh, brains but in just baseball fans as well uh, Bartolo Colon man what a great career he had a long successful career but like I said all these guys were slow starters Uh, let me know in the comments were there any players that I left off this list I know there's a lot more out there so let me know down below but that's all I have for this video everyone if you can on the way out hit that like button for me subscribe if you're new and I'll talk to you next time